Yet again, evolutionists have stumbled upon a testable conclusion made by creationism. The genome of all human beings can be traced back to a single man that scientists call Y-chromosomal Adam. Creationists could have told them that if they had only asked. As usual, evolutionists always get the dates wrong. They claim that he lived 340,000 years ago. That's before humankind even evolved. Basic math tells you that with only 500 mutations separating modern men from Y-chromosomal Adam, and only two mutations per generation, allowing for only a couple decades per generation, we easily arrive at a date of 6,000 years ago. Why do these supposed scientists keep making things so complicated for themselves? I had to investigate. It should be obvious, but in case it needs repeating, Y chromosomal Adam is not the first human. He is the most recent common ancestor of all currently living men. Even judging by biblical standards, he should be someone living just before or just after the biblical flood, which would put him closer to 4,000 years ago rather than 6,000. And he would not have been the only man alive at any time. Another obvious detail should be that Y chromosomal Adam is not a singular, static human being. His identity changes over time as the bloodlines die out. By definition, this individual must have had at least two sons. If the bloodline of one son were to die out, then the next male descendant with more than one son would become the new Y chromosomal Adam. Until such time as we can completely sequence the Y chromosome of every living male, the details of Y chromosomal Adam will always be estimated. Any dates attributed to his lifetime should be understood to be a terminus antiquem, or most recent possible date, based on the Y chromosomes we've actually examined. Because of this, if a future examination of a Y chromosome uncovers a previously unaccounted for haplogroup, the dates for Y chromosomal Adam would be pushed back even further. You may already be aware that the Y chromosome is only carried by men, and therefore is only passed from father to son. This also means that it does not recombine with most of the woman's X genes and doesn't accumulate mutations from the mother. At the same time, because the Y chromosome doesn't usually accumulate any genes from the mother, it also doesn't lose mutations from genetic recombination. As a result, when a mutation appears in the Y chromosome, it also tends to remain in the genome and we can determine relationship between male human beings by comparing which mutations they have. On the other hand, the speed of mutations in the Y chromosome itself is actually very high regardless of its genetic isolation. This is due to the highly acidic environment in which the male gametes exist. All people who share a particular mutation are known as a haplogroup. Due to subsequent mutations, there are haplogroups within haplogroups, much like the nested hierarchy deduced originally by Carolus Linnaeus. It is possible to determine which mutations are unique to humans by performing the same comparison between humans and other closely related animals, such as chimps and bonobos. By studying the Y chromosomes of people who are closely related, however, we can actually observe a mutation rate. In 2009, a team led by Yali Zhu and Chris Tyler Smith did just that. By studying the Y chromosomes of individuals separated by 13 generations, the team found a mutation rate of 1 times 10 to the negative 9 mutations per nucleotide per year, or roughly one point mutation every four generations. Their results were published in the journal Current Biology, but it should be cautioned that there really is no constant rate of mutation. In 2013, a team led by Carlos Bustamante examined the Y chromosome of over 1,200 people. In the process, the team discovered 11,640 point mutations. This allowed them to construct a very detailed family tree. When one haplogroup divides into two due to a single mutation in an individual, it's important to realize that both new haplogroups continue accumulating separate mutations and dividing further into more haplogroups. Determining a date for Y chromosomal atom isn't simply a matter of multiplying the number of mutations by the mutation rate. It's a matter of tracking which mutations occur within each haplogroup. Publishing in the journal Science, Bustamante's team determined the most authoritative Y chromosomal family tree ever deduced. According to mutation rates, Y chromosomal Adam lived somewhere between 120 and 156,000 years ago. Like mitochondrial Eve, the highest concentration of distinct haplogroups are by far in sub-Saharan Africa, so we deduce that that is where Y chromosome Adam lived. This is also where the split between haplogroups A and B occurred. Soon afterward, haplogroup 
A began dividing into several more haplogroups. At the same time, haplogroup B divided into haplogroups B and C. Haplogroup C then further divided into haplogroups E and F. The F haplogroup appears to have diverged around 50,000 years ago and is representative of all non-African haplogroups. This date also happens to coincide with the migration of Homo sapiens out of Africa. Although mitochondrial Eve and Y-chromosomal Adam lived within a couple tens of thousands of years of each other, it is highly unlikely that they ever met. While investigating, I discovered just how much data there is in the genome. Over the past two decades, literally thousands of human genes have been sequenced from people in virtually every country. Listing them all would be impossible, but here's just a small sample of notable papers. Between all of these studies of mapped genomes, there is a seemingly endless number of Y-chromosomes to study. This is why, along with measurement, recording is paramount to science. Having the luxury of detailed records from past experiments and observations means that, as time goes by, we have more and more data to make increasingly accurate deductions and far more powerful predictions. And that's another example of how creationism taught me real science. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may become the basis for a future episode. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.